Arby's Gone Wild. Hey everyone, welcome to Arby's Gone Wild number 17. I can't believe it's been 17 already. Thanks for sticking it out. Don't forget to subscribe, click like, share this on social media. I really want to grow the audience. And remember, if you have any cool RV pics or any videos or any links to some awesome RV or some crazy RV, send them our way. You can send them to RVingWithJoe at gmail.com. I can't use all the ones everybody's sending me, but I'm trying to use as many as I can. And when I do, I'll give you a shout out. Let's get started. Hey, David G, thanks for sending in these photos. This is actually a South African built Zai truck, Z-A-I Zai truck, and it's capable of overlanding Africa with ease. Looks kind of space age, but it's not, it's great nonetheless. The vehicle's an off-road office, laboratory, and sleeper. Imagine traveling the world in this monster. Sounds like he does travel the world with this thing. Mike G, thanks for sending these in. Two photos of a redneck RV with a convertible top near Waitsburg, Washington in 2008. He said, thanks for the videos and keep going wild. Man, you got your pictures catalog all the way from 2008. Way to go, Mike G. You got your together. Hey, thanks, Kim, for sending this cool truck. This is an off-road RV made in Australia. It's from caravancampingsales.com. I'll put a link to it in the description. This thing's crazy. Thanks a lot, Kim, for sending it in to us. Australia is home to some awesome expedition vehicles. But few are as dinky die Australian or as off-road capable as this freshly built six-wheel drive Ocker motorhome. Legendary West Australian off-road truck manufacturer Ocker is on the comeback trail. With this custom-built 8.3 metre long expedition vehicle, one of the latest to roll out of the Perth production facility under new ownership. It's an impressive home on wheels with close to half a million dollars spent so far to get it to this point. Hey Kim, thanks for sending this to us. This thing is cool. It's a beast. Brian R. sent us in these pics and videos. Story. He said he was trying to help his parents by doing a metal run for them. As he was arriving, he saw them trying to do the same tight turns that he can do with his trucks. The problem is they were using a Hummer and Hummers are square boxes. And what was a brand new RV then, only had not been for two weeks, was now damaged. Spidered the front glass in the trailer, some damage to the body, also some damage was done to the Hummer as well. One call to the dealer later, $1,200 just to repair the glass and not covered by insurance. In fact, why couldn't they have waited and just saved all that trouble? They had spare keys for my trucks, tractors for the three-point hitches. Brian, are you trying to internet shame your parents here? He also says that some RVers may not know, but there's a lot of tongue weight on their hitches. Gooseneck and fifth wheel more so than bumper pulls. Here's a small video of lifting the tongue weight off his truck. Dave B built this out of an old military trailer he had laid around for around 20 years. Him and his wife and his dog Bucky went on an 8,200 mile cross country trip last year. It's a very self-contained camper with all kinds of solar panels, battery storage, lots of fresh water, a kitchen. Way to go, man. This thing's really built out well. Jay Stokely sent us this pic. Jay Stokely, he's a regular follower. He sent this in. Unfortunately, here in Tampa on the 301, he saw a completely burned out camper trailer. I just hope the people weren't hurt and I hope they were able to disconnect their vehicle. Uh, I mean, when these things burn down, there's just nothing left. You know, I've been to Slab City before and there they regularly burn down RVs of troublesome people or sometimes some of them been abandoned. And man, those RVs, when they're burned to the ground and left to just burn out without anyone trying to put them out, there's nothing left at the end, just a little bit of aluminum and a pile of ashes. Peter B sent this in. He saw this near a campground in Freelton, Ontario, here in Canada. Both the trailer and the truck were in wonderful condition. They certainly are. Thanks for sending them in. And here we got Brian J sending us another good example of where people have taken a traditional travel trailer and turned it into a fifth wheel setup or a gooseneck setup by having a welded on attachment, basically. It seemed to work okay. You just gotta make sure you got the truck to be able to handle this. And with all the stories of frame flex lately, I'm just gonna stick with my little pull trailer. <laughs> Michael S. sent us in these photos. It's basically a recycled tent camper that was made into a solid wood camper. He loves the show, and Michael, we love the pics. Thanks for sending them in. Yes, this is an easy way to make your own camper, is just to get a gutted pop-up camper and put some hard sides on it. 
Scott D sent this in to us. And he wrote, hey Joe, love your content. And here's a camper made from a T-rail car body with a cabin on the back. I don't know what a T-rail car is. I'm guessing that's a local transit for where you live. It's been parked between buildings. It's been there for years. These came from Kirk P. I'm not sure of all the details on this foam trailer. I'm guessing this is partially made of foam, but I'm gonna include a Facebook link in the description to this so you can look at it some more. Thanks Kirk for sending it in. Red Rock Auto and Cycle sent these to us. This is 2018 Ram 3500. He's got a 1997 Lance Camper and he took the back seat out of his truck to create a whole bunch of storage. That's a good idea. I want to thank Larry B for sending these couple of pics in, which is clearly ready to overland during the apocalypse. But he also sent in another one. He calls it a mini C and he sees it in his neighborhood. Big thanks to Kelly M for sending this our way. Cuts to Ruts sent us this pic and a link. He also included a YouTube video, which I'm gonna include in the link below. Make sure to check it out. Thank you, Cuts to Ruts too. Thanks, Paul F. for sending these in to us. He says he really enjoys watching the show. And although he sold this rig a couple of years ago, he built it pretty much from scratch. It took him a year and 52 grand to put it all together. Went to a few Jimmy Buffett concerts. They really enjoyed their time in it. And Paul and Tina, they opened up their home to us in an invite if we ever come through their part of Texas. So thank you very much, Paul. Who knows, maybe one day we'll take you up on that. And Mark W sends us these two photos. He also ran a cord from the generator in the back of his truck down into the RV. You know, I did the same thing with one of my previous trailers where I actually just pre-wired an extension cable the entire length of the RV, threw it right into the back of the truck, and that way I was able to connect the RV to the generator in my truck, and I was even able to drive down the road while keeping it powered, like on really hot days down in the south when I wanted to keep the air conditioning running. And because Mark W thinks like me, his truck is gonna get the Ford Gold Star Tip of the Hat RVing with Joe Award for coolest Ford, just because of that cool idea of stringing the generator up. Sometimes it's all it takes to win my award. Chris and Carrie T sent these in to us. They really like watching the channel. I appreciate you guys checking it out. And they have a converted 2007 Bluebird bus. Howard F sent in this cool camper that he camps around his property with. I guess it's attached to an ATV. And take a look at this big rig. I think when people see big rigs like this, they don't realize that that big sleeper in the back is effectively an RV. I mean, take a look at the inside of this one. I think it may actually be bigger than my Ember. And when you're built on a rig like this, you never really worry about how much weight you're carrying inside your RV. And David B sent this in. It's built on a US Army Hemet, I guess is the chassis. He'd love to have the budget to build one. I'll tell you, this one, this yellow one looks really, really awesome. This other one, I think I've actually had in some previous videos. Props to Alan D for sending this our way. Alan D is remembering the 1941 Western Flyer Motorhome, an RV unlike any other out there. Here's a link to Auto Evolution talking more about it. I'll put that link in the description. Thanks, Alan. Gen G saw this. It's an interesting RV in Sequim, Washington on a Ford Ranger. It definitely looks like a Northwest rig, something you would see in Washington or Oregon. And it's time for a turducken. You know what turducken is, right? Turducken is when you take a turkey and inside it, you cook a duck and inside it, you put a chicken and you cook it all together. It tastes really great, but it's kind of a weird way to tow. Let's take a look at a few turducken setups. Yeah, I found this one online. I think I found it in the crawler hauler group. Uh, it's actually a crawler hauler, but it's a boat hauler. So this person took this RV and actually made it into a boat hauler. I'd love to see them dock and undock this one in person. Lee S. sent this in. This uh, camper van is kind of interesting in that it uh, has a VW Bug attached to the top facing the other direction. So it's a bit of an amalgam. I was at the Crawler Hauler Facebook group when I saw this one for sale. Um, I haven't gotten in touch with the seller, so I'm not going to put their name here. But if you're really interested in wanting to buy this, I think it's out in Texas, head on over to the Crawler Hauler Facebook group. And when you go in there, you'll see the person uh, trying to sell this thing. Here we've got a big beefy turducken. What I really like here is we've got the pop-up on top of that gooseneck uh, trailer, and it's actually flipped 90 degrees. So it opens up sort of over the roadway as opposed to over itself. Real interesting idea. And of course, he's got some monster crawler machines on the back there. I'm sure that truck is not even challenged towing that thing. And here we got another traditional crawler hauler. Again, I know I'm fascinated with these things, but I just really like them. They seem like a real healthy form of turducken. So now I have to get a crawler, I guess, so that I can put a crawler on my crawler hauler. My wife's gonna smack me upside the head when she hears that. Snap out of it! And finally here, we've got a truck pulling some kind of fiberglass trailer 
that has flat towing a smart car. I didn't even know you could flat tow a smart car, but this guy got a shot of one, so I guess you can. Maybe if it's a manual transmission? Here's a funny little video. Eugene sent this to us. He made it for his YouTube video. I thought I'd share it here. All right, we're all set for the cross country trip. We got Crockett, Tubbs, Bucky. Jack, you ready? Oh, and what about Baby? You all set? Let's go. Jesus. RVing with pets has moved. That's right, we're gonna actually make a separate video for the RVing with pets. Look, don't worry about it. There's a link at the very end of this video. And if you can't wait, I'm gonna put a link right there and you can just skip over the rest of this video and jump straight to RVing with pets. And finally here, we have got the ultimate collection from Nate O. You might have seen some last week, but this time we have even more from Nate O. I wanna make a big thank you for Nate O for sending these our way. Let's get going. There's far too many for me to comment on. Let's just get moving. And that's about it for RV's Gone Wild number 17. Remember, send me your pics, send me your vids, RVingWithJoe at gmail.com. 
I really love your feedback, so feel free to send me any comments you have below. Make sure to share this video on social media. Click like and subscribe and all that. And if you're waiting for RVing with pets, here it is right here to my left. Go check out the new RVing with pets video. We're gonna have a standalone video. Down here is a classic RVs gone wild video. I'm gonna put that down there. And down below, I'm gonna put a camping video because that's the other thing we do here. We like to go camping. Thanks everyone. See you later.